this is going to be a video on these uh, web tables that I've had uh, since 2016, I want to say. And uh, I had five of them at one point in time. Um, just an unbelievably lucky kind of win, I guess, that uh, these tables were used as um, fixture tables for weld automation. And um, when they got done with the project, they scrapped them. And um, I called the uh, scrapyard and made sure I got my hands on them. And I picked up all five of them, believe it or not, I think for scrap weight. So it was like around a thousand bucks. And uh, I've just been slowly putting in a bunch of work into them over the years. And um, Swiss cheese in the top and putting these uh, whole patterns in the top was high on my list of things to do. And this is uh, kind of a video about how we went about it. After stripping the tooling off the top of the table, I was left with dozens of these 3 8 holes, and it would have been really hard to weld shut and get a nice weld on there all the way through the thickness of the table, so we widened them out using that step bit, and then just gave these holes a little bit of a cleaning to get all the cutting fluid and oils out of there before we started welding them shut. Here's a little bit of a walk around of uh, what we've done so far, and uh, welding them shut was a little bit of a tedious process. You had to create yourself a, a little shelf down at the very bottom of the hole, and so you kind of put a few tacks down there until you got the very bottom of the hole closed up. And then you could kind of pull the trigger in one long run, um, as I'm showing you here. And then uh, I stopped a little short of the very top of the hole because things would get very hot. So I kind of filled them up like 80 or 90 percent of the way uh, full and then I would come back later and uh, um, fill them the rest of the way full and just trying to stop right when you had um, gotten enough fill in there to go just over the top of the table. And that was important because every single one of these had to be ground flush with the table. When I went to decide um, what size of hole pattern I should use in this table. It came down to a couple things. Um, number one would probably be a two by two uh, standard kind of hole space in these. You know, a lot of tables would have just taken us way too long to drill. And then it didn't fit very well on the table. Part of the problem is these cross supports that run underneath the table, you would be running into the side walls and causing your drill to have all kinds of problems. So it didn't work. Uh, very well. And then what we ended up landing on was a 5x5 five five pattern. It just ended up fitting on the table just perfectly. So it, it was just um, pure luck that it ended up fitting quite that well. And then all the holes managed to fall in the center of these tubes underneath the table so that we wouldn't have any drilling problems as we went along. And then I use SketchUp um, to make a model of this. It's pretty accurate just because it had to be in order to get kind of this template made that we use to drill the holes. And the way it works is um, you kind of clamp down this template for the first row, drill all the holes, and then you can shift the template uh, forward by the spacing of the holes, which is five inches. And then you can use some pins to locate the template and um, use some table clamps to clamp down that template and then drill the next set of holes and you just work your way clear across the table and i actually use sketchup a lot now to output things that i'm going to cut on the plasma table and it's pretty simple you just you hide anything you don't want in the model and then give yourself a top view and a lot of times it's good to put the camera in parallel projection so you don't get any distortion on the image, especially if that image or the item in your model has depth. This is just a 2D image, so it doesn't have any depth to it. And um, using SketchUp Pro, you can export as a DXF. And um, it works really well when going into the TorchMate software. I've already exported this once, so I'll do it again. And then show you how it imports into the TorchMate software really quickly.
takes a second. There we go. And there it is. Um, you can create a path on here real quick. And it's not too long before you're ready to go down to the machine and actually run it. And there you can see the path that the plasma cutter is going to take with a little lead in and then I turn it the long direction of the uh, material. Highlight it and output your uh, G code file. And just like that, you're ready to cut that on the plasma cutter. And you'll see this template in the next part of the video um, when we're actually getting ready to drill out these holes. Here I'm just working on getting that template uh, squared up to the table. And I just have a couple of C-clamps uh, loosely clamped down to the top of the template. And then I'm just using a tape measure to kind of even things out left to right and front to back and have those C-clamps loose enough that I can still kind of move things around with that hammer. Underneath of the template is a quarter by one aluminum flat bar. It just raises the template up off the table far enough that I can uh, more easily locate the mag drill when I'm drilling all these holes. Working out the size of those holes was a little bit of an exercise. I kind of made a little plate that had six different hole sizes in it. And, um, in the software, I just increased the size of the hole by about a thousandth of an inch every time um, we went to cut and then just tested it with a 5 8 uh, annular cutting bit for the main drill until I found the right size and then when I made the template I made sure to use the size that I found uh, earlier just by doing some test cuts. I knew the tool of choice for this was going to be a mag drill and I didn't own one um, until I went to do this project that I've used a lot in the past. I'd, Never used this particular mag drill before, um, but it was, you know, unbelievably well reviewed. It was made by Milwaukee, and they got a reputation for making tools like this. Um, and this drill is no exception. It was uh, unbelievably well made. I, th I think I might actually do a tour review on it. It impressed me so much. Um, it was just really easy to use and super robust. And this handle, you can see that I'm getting ready to put on here is ambidextrous. The whole drill is ambidextrous, so it doesn't matter if you're left or right hand or which way you want to work it. Everything kind of flip-flops so that you can use it on either side of the drill. And it's got a light on it and a permanent magnet. And um, so yeah, I might do a tour review on this thing just because it impressed me so much. Started out using a water-based cutting fluid and quickly changed to an oil base. It just went through too much fluid on a water base. And, a little something thicker. These drills use these uh, annular cutters. Uh, this happens to be one from the Master Car. They work pretty good. It, um, I think it was a six fluid. It had a lot of flutes on it. And this material that we're drilling is pretty thick. In some spots, when you're over a tube, it's, you're going to be going through about an inch and a quarter of thickness. And um, to make it a little easier uh, to drill these out, I would just locate the drill in the hole on the template and lock it down. And then I'd only drill a partial hole and kind of mark the hole out and then move down. And the reason was is because with the template there, the bit can clear it chips very well. So you would kind of clog up in chips. And so it was just easier to kind of drill a partial hole all the way down the template, remove the template and then finish drill the holes coming back at another pass. I did want to set up some kind of fancy time lapse or something for drilling these holes, but we just didn't uh, have the time or the energy or put in the effort, I guess. And um, So I'm just kind of showing a couple of holes uh, here. And I don't actually show drilling out um, the whole table because it was just a mind-numbing process and it took Oh, several days at least to actually drill the finish holes in the top of the table. There's 168 holes uh, in each table. It's 14 holes in the template, and then you move the template 12 times to complete the table. So it, it takes quite a while. And we did two of these tables as well. I think it took us three of those uh, bits and 
I honestly believe that one of those bids probably would have done both tables, but we just had a couple of uh, mishaps, um, one of which was we hit a, a hardened dowel pin with one of them, and it ruined the uh, teeth on the cutter, so it uh, trashed that one. And then we learned the lesson of having to move the template um, to help clear chips the hard way, and we jammed the bit and broke it. So it took us uh, two or three bits to get through it. Here you can see the finished product, and after drilling all those holes, we had to come back and chamfer the tops of them too with the little chamfer bit, but that wasn't too bad pretty quick. Um, just really happy with how they turned out. I wish I would have bit the bullet earlier, of course, and done this project a little sooner, but it uh, certainly turned out nice.